రామాయ రామ భద్రాయ రామచంద్రాయ వేదసే రఘునాథాయ నాథాయ సీతాయ పతి ఏ నమ బాలకాండ్ చాప్టర్ నంబర్ ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ ద చర్నింగ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఓషన్ ద రెసిటేషన్ స్టార్ట్స్ నా విశ్వామిత్ర ఎండెడ్ ఇన్ ద మిడ్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రొఫౌండ్ సైలెన్స్ ఫార్ ఇన్ ఆస్ట్రక్ సైలెన్స్ హిస్ లిస్నర్స్ డ్రాంక్ ఇన్ హిస్ వర్డ్స్ విత్ ద ఇయర్స్ ఇన్ హార్ట్స్ Rama was the first to break the spell and spoke. Reverend Master, these episodes of the coming down of Ganga and the digging of the ocean by the sons of Sagara, how wonderful and strange. The audience took respectful leave of the sage to seek repose, but the princess lay awake pondering over the marvelous recital until the small hours of dawn stole upon them. They rose betimes and, having gone through the morning observances, approached Vishwamitra and said, O Holy One, the night passed away all too soon, revolving over the wonderful stories narrated by you. A boat, especially furnished for holy ascetics such as you, awaits your pleasure. Shall we cross the sacred stream over to the other bank? So be it, replied Vishwamitra. and very soon they were on the other side of the river they rested there a while and from where they sat the towers of the renowned vishala rose into view soon they resumed their journey and were on their way towards the capital that vied in magnificence with the very abode of the immortals rama took the opportunity to question the guru about the city may i request to know which royal race rules here at present Vishwamitra caught the hint and proceeded to recount the past history of Vishala. In the last Krita Yuga, the sons of Diti were very powerful, while the sons of Aditi were mighty and walked in the way of good. How shall we escape the decrepitude of age and the horrors of death? So thought they, the Devas and the Asuras. At length, they hit upon a plan and resolved to churn the milky ocean. and partake of the ambrosia that would spring therefrom that would ensure them immortality well they set to work in dead earnest the milky ocean was a churning pot and the mount mandara the churn vasuki the king of serpents was the rope and they churned with unabated energy for thousands of years then vasuki their rope gave out and vomited deadly poison from his many mouths while in the height of his agony he crunched to atoms the hard granite of the rocks first rose the fiery venom hala hala and began to consume the affrighted worlds and everything therein men and gods birds and beasts the lord of light sought the presence of mahadeva in his home of ice and snow and lifted up their hearts and hands to him in humble prayer Lord of beings, Rudra of terrible energy, giver of all good, we take refuge in thee and seek the shadow of thy feet. Save us, O Lord, from this cruel fate. Thou art our stay and support. And to them thus engaged in heartful prayer and humble entreaty, there came the resplendent Lord Vishnu, his broad shoulders graced with a mighty conch and disc. And to the wielder of the trident spake he in accents of persuasive melody. These gods here churn the milky ocean and have come to offer you the first fruits of their hard labor. For, said he with a charming smile, you, brother mine, are the firstborn among them and it behooves you to accept this hala hala as your portion and save them from destruction. He disappeared then and there even while the sound of his sweet voice was still in the ears of his listeners and the moon crested one moved there unto by the abject fear of the gods and the request of Vishnu repaired unto the milky ocean and swallowed the dread hala hala even as though it were a delicious draught of ambrosia his mercy mission accomplished he returned to his mountain home and left the gods to resume their arduous work but a fresh misfortune was in store for them the mount mandra their churn sank from view deep into the abysmal regions of patala once again the devatas raised their voice in earnest application to the guardian of the worlds the lord vishnu
All creation lives and moves in thee and has its being, but we are proud to claim a place in the warmest corner of thy heart. Lead us out of this mishap and find a way to keep the mountain firm while we churn the sea. And Hari, the soul of mercy, laid himself in the deep waters as a mighty tortoise and bore the mountain on his back while his extended hands grasped it at the top and steadied the whirling mass. And wonderful to behold, he stood among the gods and churned as assiduously as any. A thousand years of hard toil and there arose from Amidst the seething waters, Dhanvantri, the god of health, with staff and water pot. Next, the lovely Apsaras, 60,000 in number, their attendants, Ramadir, are past count. They were so called Apsaras since the charming ones formed their essence, Rasa, that sprang from the churning of the mighty waters, Apis. The gods would have none of them, nor the Asuras, hence they came to be common women, free to all. Next came forth Varuni, the daughter of Varuna, the lord of waters, and looked about for someone who would take her to wife. But the sons of Diti turned away from her in haughtiness and pride, whereat the gods took that stainless beauty unto themselves with a glad heart. Hence the name Asuras, that the sons of Diti went by, those that accepted not Sura or Varuni, while the gods rejoiced in the appellation of Suras, the lord of Sura. Next, Uchesraivas, the prince of horses, then Kaustaba, the gem of divine luster, and at last the Amrita, the waters of immortality. It was the apple of discords thrown in the midst of the celestials, and they fought for it to the nail. Terrible was the battle that ensued between the sons of Aditi on one hand, and the Asuras, and the Rakshasas on the other, and the hearts of all beings quaked in wild dismay thereat. Fearful of the carnage amongst the Asuras, and they were about to be exterminated, when the ungodly sons of Diti were thus laid low, Lord Vishnu of unthinkable might appeared among the combatants as a fascinating siren, a dream of beauty to lure away the hearts of the unrighteous ones, verily an illusion cast by the master of all illusions, and bear away the hard one Amrita, and that they tried to bar his way, that unfortunate Asuras fell no more to rise. For was he not the ruler of the entire universe, the supreme Lord himself, who waxes not nor wanes? Thus were the impious brood of Diti overwhelmed with the angels of peace, the servants of the Lord, and Indra, the king and leader, regained his empire over the worlds, gods and immortals, saints and sages, and ruled wisely and well. Mangalam Goshlendraya Mahaniya Gunate Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarvabhaumaya Mangalam